Atomic Heart is a game that's been turning heads with its unique take on the Bioshock Infinite formula. From the captivating floating city to the reality-bending powers at your disposal, this game has all the hallmarks of a great adventure. But what really sets Atomic Heart apart is its exploration of Soviet Russian collectivism and how it relates to the concept of free will. It's a bold and thought-provoking premise that's sure to leave you pondering the nature of choice and control long after the credits roll. However, as much as we love the game's ideas, we have to admit that there are some issues that hold it back. The protagonist can be a bit of a pain, and the storyline isn't quite as engaging as we'd like it to be. But don't let that stop you from experiencing the game's unique charm and style for yourself. So if you're looking for a game that's equal parts captivating, thought-provoking, and thrilling, look no further than Atomic Heart. Atomic Heart is a game that imagines a different version of history where a guy named Dmitry Sechenov kickstarts a robot boom in Russia in the 1930s. By the 1950s, the regular folks in the Soviet Union are gone, replaced entirely by robots controlled through a fancy hive mind network called Collective 1.0. The game starts a few years after all that, just before they're about to show off Collective 2.0 to the world. This new version will let everyone hook up their brains to the hive mind network using a thought device and control robots remotely. It also lets people share info with each other no matter how far apart they are. It's basically like having the internet plugged into your brain 24-7. If we look back at things now, we know that the internet isn't all sunshine and rainbows, but Major Sergei Nichiev works for Sechenov and believes that it can bring people together and share tons of useful info. His job is to check out what's going on at Facility 3826, which is the coolest research spot in the Soviet Union. He's got a chatty glove named Charles who hooks him up with some sick powers like telekinesis and cryokinesis, thanks to some fancy polymers. And Charles also has to put up with Sergei's annoying jokes and snarky comments all the time. As Sergei makes his way through the creepy and gory tunnels of the underground lab, he finds out that some experiments on mutations have gone haywire, and the robots he thought were his pals have turned into vicious killers. But things get even worse when Charles, his chatty glove, starts talking about the dark side of Collective 2.0, which is already hooked up to Sergei's brain. Charles tells him that all the info he's getting is only what the algorithm wants him to see, and he's being manipulated without even knowing it. It's like someone's controlling his thoughts without him realizing it. Charles warns him that if someone controls the info that everyone shares, then they can control everyone who's connected to it, just like they can control robots. Atomic Heart has an interesting concept where we control Sergei's actions in the game, and it's intriguing to think that we're also being manipulated by the game's fictional algorithm to view the world a certain way. But let's be real, exploring free will in a video game is nothing new, and Atomic Heart doesn't bring anything particularly fresh to the table. In fact, Sergei actively stops us from exploring this idea further. He's too focused on killing robots and blaming the bad guy to even consider reflecting on his actions. Even when Charles tries to discuss the morality of their mission and the larger implications of what's going on, Sergei just brushes him off and says he'll leave the thinking to Sechenov. It's frustrating to see a character who refuses to grow or change, and it makes you wonder how anyone can be so stubborn and annoying. Sergei's a real jerk in Atomic Heart. He's always picking fights with everyone, even with Charles who's always trying to be helpful. And we never find out why he's such a grump, which makes you realize you're just controlling a terrible person. It's not fun when Sergei starts spouting his unfunny insults and I feel worse for the people he's being a jerk to than for Sergei himself, but even though Sergei is a total blockhead, he knows how to throw down in a fight. He's got all sorts of sweet powers in his left hand and a bunch of guns and other tools in his right, so he's definitely not someone you want to mess with. Even though the bad guys he's fighting are way faster than him, he can still use his sweet dash move to dodge and weave around them, making the battles pretty intense and high energy. As you progress through the game, the fights get even more exciting and challenging because the enemies start to have their own unique moves and weaknesses. Atomic Heart has a bunch of different enemies to fight, which is cool. But honestly, they're not all that unique. 
You've probably seen them before in other games. Some run around like dogs trying to get behind you, some shoot at you from far away like turrets, and others are big and slow but can pack a punch. The same goes for the weapons and powers you get. A shotgun that shoots like a shotgun and a freezing power that does what it says on the tin. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it still feels good to play. Looting an Atomic Heart is surprisingly the most fun part. Just by clicking a button, Charles can use his telekinetic powers to pull loot into Sergei's pocket. This causes drawers to fly open, cabinet doors to almost break off, and the bodies of enemies to explode as Charles magnetically pulls resources towards Sergei. It's always exciting to enter a new room or take out a group of enemies and watch as everything gets sucked into your pockets like a greedy tornado. You can then use these resources to craft new weapons, ammo, attachments, and items, but honestly, the act of looting itself is almost reward enough. Once you finish the first mission, Sergei jumps on a monorail to get to the main area of the game, which turns into an open world format. But here's the thing, the story slows down to a painfully slow pace as Sergei has to go to one of several facilities to finish a mission, go back to the open world, travel to the next facility, and repeat the whole process. Even if you don't want to explore the map, do extra challenges, or collect materials for your guns, the travel time between locations still ruins the story's pace. There's no important story stuff outside of the linear levels of the different facilities, and the fights are much better in those levels too. The enemy placement and types are carefully designed for specific areas of those linear levels, but that careful design is lost in the open world. I usually just drove straight to the next part of the story because that's where the fun is. The open world feels like it's just there to add more content, but it comes at the cost of the game's fun factor. Cool thing is, some of the main levels in Atomic Heart have a unique vibe and interesting themes that make them stand out from the rest of the open world. My top pick is the level set in a theater known for having the first ever all-robot cast. Here, Sergei is chasing after a former employee who has turned the theater into a creepy art exhibit, kinda like in Bioshock. You can find diary entries that reveal an engineer's weird relationship with one of the robot dancers, a puzzle that involves ballet moves and blood, and a super dope moment where you fight off enemies during a hip-hop ballet remix. This level is really awesome, and it's a bummer that there aren't more like it. Or at least more examples of using music to create a memorable combat experience. The music in Atomic Heart is pretty cool, with Mick Gordon delivering some energetic, head-bobbing tunes that'll get you pumped even in the most intense battles. But most of the time, you'll only hear these epic beats during boss fights. So you only get to hear them once before they're gone. The theater scene is great, but it's the only time the game uses music like that. Atomic Heart doesn't build on it to create more moments like it. In fact, there are times when the awesome music doesn't match what's happening on screen. Like why would you play rock music during a tense battle in a morgue? It just doesn't make sense. Atomic Heart has a lot of things that don't quite mesh well, which can make for a confusing experience. One of the biggest examples is how the game's world history is really cool and makes you think about free rule and collectivism, but the main character is such a jerk that it keeps getting in the way of exploring those ideas. If you're into games like Bioshock Infinite, then you might like Atomic Heart, but I wouldn't say it's a must play for everyone. What aspects of the game did you enjoy the most? Were there any particular moments that stood out to you? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more gaming content. Until next time, peace out.